parents put up her picture everywhere. They put up missing posters all over the place. They rented billboards to put her face on. Um, and her mother immediately said that she must have been kidnapped. However, police quickly ruled this out because there was no demand for ransom made. And, um, like, I understand that there's other reasons to kidnap children, but she was disabled. So I just want to say, you know, people would probably have a lot of, um, work with her. I don't know. I just, police didn't see any reason that they would have specifically taken her. Um, and then a few days later, on March 27th, her mother started inviting people into the apartment for interviews, which was really strange because police, for some reason, hadn't sectioned it off as a crime scene. Um, so, aside from the fact that there had already been a lot of, like, investigators in the apartment, she now started inviting random strangers in to give interviews to and just walking all over the place. She actually gave a lot of interviews. Um, she sat on her daughter's bed while giving these interviews and started saying things like, well, if I lost her, at least I still have my other daughter. Like, she just started giving really weird answers and, and people just thought that she was acting really strange. Police actually, when they started doing a deeper investigation into this case, found, felt that both parents were acting kind of odd. Now, I don't know what the dad did that made them think he was acting odd, but the mother definitely started giving some questionable answers. Also, both nannies were convinced that the parents had something to do with it. And police eventually came to the conclusion that either the parents or the nannies were responsible for whatever happened to Paulette. Now, they found out that both the parents had been lying from the start. So, this is where it gets a little confusing. The parents hadn't been the ones searching for her. It was the nannies who searched everywhere. So, that makes me think that the parents were actually home and had told police that they searched for her everywhere. Um, but it, they didn't. The nannies were the ones that searched for her. And um, when they came back to the apartment, they said that both parents were just casually sitting around, like smoking a cigarette, walking around the apartment a little bit, like the dad was searching, but he was apparently opening a door here or there, like he wasn't distraught, he wasn't panicked, he wasn't de like searching for her in detail. They both kind of seemed unconcerned. Um, the nannies talked about the fact that apparently they were having a lot of financial struggles. They weren't going to be able to keep that apartment for much longer. Um, and that their marriage was also falling apart. They were fighting a lot. And um, said that the mother might not have even been on a trip with friends, but might have been out with a lover. I don't know how true that is. That was never really investigated, so that's just what the nanny said they thought might have happened, but that's not been proven. So on March 30th, both parents and nannies were placed in detention. From what I understand, it might have been in a hotel, not at the police station, but they were sequestered uh, separately so that police could question them. Now, psychologists questioned them and said that the mother had some sort of personality disorder because she was completely lacking empathy and not just for her daughter, for everyone. I guess I didn't see the word psychopath anywhere, but I guess you could kind of call her a psychopath. Like that's the, the mark of a psychopath having no empathy and she apparently had no empathy for anyone. Um, the father at the same time didn't really want to answer a lot of questions. He just didn't want to offer up any help in finding his daughter. And then on March 31st, and this is the strangest part of the entire case, Paulette's body was found. She was found wedged in a corner of her bed between the 
say, searched that entire apartment. They searched her room from top to bottom. They used sniffer dogs, and yet nobody found Paulette. So the question becomes, was she there from the start and people just didn't see her because she was hidden, she was wedged like between the bed and the bed frame completely covered by her duvet um, but I don't understand how you search every, supposedly every inch of that apartment and don't find her also this is nine days after she went missing so either nine or potentially ten days after she died, there will be a smell coming off that. I don't, like some people said, well, the, the covers probably covered up the smell. No, not if she's been dead for nine days. I don't care. Like maybe for four or five days, but I have never um, seen a dead body. But from everything I've heard, the moment you smell a dead body, you know. That's what it is. Even if you've never had it before, you know it. It is a very distinctive, extremely strong odor that it gives off. I don't think that nine days into it, you wouldn't smell that around the apartment. Um, now, the lead attorney initially said it was murder, but then after speaking with the parents, he quickly ruled it an accidental death. There's a lot to do about this lead attorney because he claimed that he searched around the bed, but somehow missed her. He was apparently also very close to her dad, and he was banned from giving interviews after a while. He also resigned after this case because he kept changing his story. He kept, from like one interview to the next, changing his story, giving out details that were completely wrong. He also immediately blamed it on the mother, which I think is an interesting case be uh, point because people said, well, he was apparently very close to the dad, so he immediately blamed it on the mother. But if the mother and the father were married, <laughs> why would you blame it on the spouse if you're a good friend? You know what I mean? Like, if I had a married couple as friends, I mean, I do, but if, um, if that, if something like that happened and I was really close to one of them, I wouldn't blame it on the person they loved just to acquit them. Yes, they were having marital problems, but I'm pretty sure they still loved each other, so I don't really understand why he would immediately blame it on the mother just because he was close to the dad. Also, at this point, the autopsy hadn't taken place yet, so um, the fact that he just came out and ruled it an accidental death is interesting because there was no um, official ruling yet. Now, the autopsy did eventually come back and said that it was an accidental death because there were no wounds found that would have been the obvious cause of death and there was no strangulation that had taken place. The death was ruled asphyxiation, but accidental. So here is where we get into the theories. There's a couple of them. Um, the first theory is obviously that her mother killed her. I don't know why specifically people think it was her mother and why not her father or both. Um, I know her mother is the, the one that lacks empathy and her mother is the one that's been acting kind of the strangest, but her father wasn't exactly searching for her either or offering up any help, didn't seem particularly upset, didn't seem um, bothered really by the whole situation. So the, the, the most popular theory specifically is that the mother killed her, but I honestly think that if something happened, it would have been both the parents. Um, now, but the mother did lack, did lack empathy, and she wasn't very affectionate with either of her children. Um, there is a big theory that, um, I'll, well, I'll get into that one later, but it, she either, they either killed her and hid her somewhere in, in the building until they knew what to do with her, and didn't realize that it was going to get 
got so big and then didn't know what to do and just put her back in her bed. There are people in the building who said that they saw a lump in the elevator shaft. But I don't know where this came from. Um, I don't know what kind of building it was. I've never been able to look down an elevator shaft in any building. And especially not... I don't. I, I just don't really know what they meant by it. But some people in the building said that they saw something suspicious in the elevator shaft. Um, another theory is that her seven-year-old sister accidentally killed her. Um, because the parents fought a lot. It might be that they had a particularly big fight that night and that Paulette was very upset and very rowdy and that the sister went in to try and comfort her but in trying to um, calm her down accidentally smothered her and that the parents were trying to cover it up. Um, I'm not ruling this out. Uh, I think it's perfectly possible. However, I do question a little bit why the parents would try to cover it up since the mother had no empathy for either of her children. Um, another theory is because they had a lot of financial issues that they were actually trying to make it look like a kidnapping. Her mother did immediately say that she assumed it was a kidnapping in order to get a ransom that was put together by either the grandparents or the public and that they would then take that money and then, you know, Balak would be returned to them. But that while they, you know, they, the, the theory is that they took her and hid her somewhere in the building, perhaps in the elevator shaft, and that because she couldn't speak, she would never be able to tell people what happened to her. But that because they weren't expecting it to get so big and so many like investigators being in their apartment, they it took much longer for everyone to go away than they thought. And she ended up dying because she was in there for like 10 days by herself. Um, however, I have a lot of issues with this theory. A, I find it really far-fetched uh, to think that anyone would go to those lengths. I'm not saying people out there don't exist like that, but I find it really far-fetched. B. Um, similar in the Champagne case, a lot of people think that her parents did it or her brother accidentally killed her and they tried to cover it up. Immediately when she went missing, a ransom note was found. Before they even found her body, they found a ransom note. So my question would be if this was their intention to get to make it look like a kidnapping and then get ask for a ransom. Why not immediately leave behind a ransom note on the bed? Um, also, it said, you know, it became too big. Too many people got involved and they didn't have time to go get her. I don't think that's true either because a few days after she went missing, they invited in people to give interviews to. Police was already gone at this point. They could have waited with that and brought ransom in. Plus, it's a ransom note. You could write it anywhere and just mail it to yourself or manually drop it into the mailbox. I just don't see this happening. I don't think that it would have taken them so long to come up with a ransom note and that she would have died in the meantime. Plus, I think people know that ransom isn't paid and brought together overnight. It was always going to take a while. So Paulette would always have died if they just left her on her own for days. So I don't believe this theory, but a lot of people apparently do. Um, another theory is that she actually already died on the trip away with her father and sister, possibly accidentally, and they tried to hide it when they got back. Again, I have issues with this theory. My issue with this theory is that they would have driven back in the car with the seven-year-old, obviously seeing that her sister was dead. I don't think a seven-year-old can keep that a secret. I think no matter how much you tell her that she has to lie or say that, you know, her sister is missing or no matter what you do, I don't think a seven-year-old can keep a secret that big. So I think that would have come out if that had happened. Um, and then the last 
theories that it genuinely was an accidental death, that she was there the whole time, but nobody found her. It, and that they didn't do the investigation as well as they said they did, that they didn't search the apartment as well as they said they did, and that they didn't, um, you know, search the bed properly, properly and didn't find her. But I just, I don't know. I find it weird. She was a four. She was not well developed, so I can understand that she was a small four-year-old. But she was still a four-year-old. They're not that small for nobody to find her. Plus, I'll put a picture up of the bed for her too. She was found wedged as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you know this. She was found wedged between the corner and the post at the end of the bed for her to scooch all the way down there and then somehow get her wedged in deep enough. She had very limited mobility. I don't know if she would have been able to do that. Um, I can understand though that maybe she wanted to get up in the middle of the night, scooch to the end of the bed and somehow got herself stuck, but knowing that she wouldn't be able to walk without help. Why would she try, try to get out of the bed in the middle of the night? Like, I know she was only four, but I think if you're disabled from birth, you kind of know, even at that age, what you can and can't do. And I don't know why she would have done that. Um, however, out of all the theories, it is the one that I believe the second most. I do personally believe that her parents killed her for whatever reason. Um, I actually believe the financial issues won, but that they didn't kidnap her and try to ask for ransom, but then somehow failed. I think because she had so many medical bills that they killed her to stop the medical bills and be able to use that money for something else. Um, I think that's the one I believe the most. I'm not ruling out the accidental death theory. It was ruled I do question if they killed her how they did it because there were no signs found of murder. Asphyxi asphyxiation, yes, but um, even if you were to say put a pillow over someone's face until they suffocate, there are usually still signs of that um, that the autopsy would find. But the whole investigation was kind of shoddy. I don't know if the uh, autopsy was done properly. Um, but yeah, that's all there is in this case. I find it such a fascinating case. A another thing that I want to talk about actually is, um, her mother gave interviews while sitting on her bed. Yes, it was a fairly big bed. She could have sat on the side and not, um, come anywhere near that corner. But with so many people being in the room while she was doing interviews and then her sitting on the bed so often, I find it so extremely weird that she wouldn't have found her sooner, that nobody found her sooner. And again, the smell. Yes, the covers could have covered it up for a while, but not for nine days. And they brought sniffer dogs in. They are trained to find a dead body, a body that even expired just an hour ago. They are trained to find that. So the fact that she might have been there all along and even the dogs didn't find her, again, unless they didn't bring the dogs into the bedroom like they said they did. But if they did, then I am pretty sure they would have found her. So I really don't know what to think about this one. I really don't. I think if they, I don't know. On the one hand, I would say, I think if they killed her, why would they put her back in the bed? Why not, you know, make her show up somewhere else? But I guess if they were trying to make it look like an accident, they would have put her there. I don't know. I'm really confused. I think there are arguments for both the accident theory and the murder theory. So I'd be very curious to, to know what you guys 
guys think. Um, I'll link a bunch of YouTube videos down below that I took this information from. Some of them are a bit more detailed than uh, what I talked about, so feel free to check those out. And yeah, let me know your theories. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Feel free to do that. And please also subscribe.